Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Autism Stories. I'm your host, Doug Bletcher, the founder of Autism Personal Coach. Autistic people are the true experts of the autistic experience, and Autism Stories is where we interview autistic people to learn from their stories, experiences, and get their insights. If you'd like to be notified about each week's episode of Autism Stories, we suggest you subscribe on your favorite podcast listening platform. We would also appreciate it if you could give us a positive rating and review, as it will help others to learn about Autism Stories. On today's episode of Autism Stories, the wonderful Emma Cladis joins me to discuss screenplays she has written and being the first non-speaking autistic student at her university. We hope you enjoy today's conversation. Emma, uh, thanks so much for joining me today. And um, I wanted to start our conversation by learning where does your story in the autistic community begin? I think this difficult journey began at about two years old. Now I'm speaking autism sucks, but I'm where I need to be. This then is hopeful. I am 25 years old. I have autism and I'm an emerging speaker. Thanks to Soma Mutopadhyay, my first typing teacher, I learned to type to communicate at six years old. That is when my life changed from slipping into autism silence to engaging with the world. Now, as you just mentioned, you learned to type to communicate at six years old, and you were mainstreamed into second grade and typical education classes ever since. So, so many non-speaking and other autistics do not, you know, get access to that type of education. So what's been the impact on you in being in these typical education settings? Being in typical mainstream education made me think and learn just like anyone else. It gave me the opportunity to have an excellent education and get into college. I really think that it was vital that I was included with all kinds of wonderful people. It was great being accepted, and I accepted differences in others too. Things could get a bit difficult at times, figuring out how to accommodate me, but my family and support staff are remarkably creative. Once I was able to show my intelligence, teachers believe in me. They collaborated and figured it out. I love being in typical classes, and I still do. I try to bring my best to share. My goal and expectations are to graduate and find a good job. A big decision in our lives can be where we uh, want to go to college. And currently you're a student studying to be a screenwriter at Vanguard University. What was it about Vanguard that uh, made you decide that you wanted to attend school there? It's good to say that I picked Vanguard because they were very open and accepting of my differences. They focused on my abilities and welcomed me into a wonderful Christian community. It's good to go to a university that suits your needs. Vanguard's faith based and small campus is perfect and does it for me. That's wonderful to hear. And from what I understand, you're Vanguard's first non-speaking autistic person on campus. So... I'm hopeful, at least, that they've learned a lot from you so that there will be many other non-speaking autistic students who can attend Vanguard in the future. What do you hope that Vanguard has learned from you? I hope that I have represented my typing community well. I want to think that Vanguard is learning to accept different types of people in its student body with more understanding and good curiosity. I have had the opportunity to present in classes of students training to be future teachers. I hope I open their minds and hearts. I believe that in each class, I show that I'm intelligent and want to participate and be a great student. When this shines true, the students and professors want to get to know me more. 
I also know that my faith shines every time I'm on campus and that blesses others there also. Now, I wanted to learn a little bit. Um, you know, I understand you're studying to be a screenwriter and that you've written uh, multiple uh, screenplays dating back to 2018. One of the screenplays uh, that you wrote touched on the lead character being betrayed by someone who they thought they were friends with, someone that they uh, trusted. What are some ways you found in building trust in your friendships? I wrote Betrayal from a personal experience, and the writing of it helped me process the friend's betrayal and heal to move past it. I think it is so important to have true friends. I see we need to have more friendships within the autism community. I think that really friendship says you are a person of value, someone that can be trusted and loved. I am blessed to have a group of typing friends that have developed trust and supported each other over the years. We meet on Zoom weekly to share our lives and get together to hang out and have fun whenever possible. These friends are tried and true. We have each other's backs no matter what the world may throw at us. So in thinking about friendships, I read at the age of 10, you were one of the founders of Friendship Group, which is a safe space for autistic typers to come and socialize. How have these friendships specific, specifically with others who communicate by AAC or facilitated communication been helpful to you? These AAC users are my tribe. Like in any friendship, intimacy and camaraderie grows quickly when you have a lot in common. Our meeting times are a place of comfort and no judgment. I think that we really try to include everyone with open hearts. I'm 25 now and have grown up with these wonderful friends. We are now seeing the younger generation behind us coming to the group wanting friendships. We love this, they will stand on our shoulders with how to make good relationships, and this will lead to better advocacy to change this world to be more accepting. I love hearing about the now the younger group is coming up and it's just gonna extend um, beyond your age group. That's wonderful. So another one of your screenplays that you wrote deals with the theme of holding on to anger, which is something that pretty much any of us have experienced. What have been some things for you that have been helpful in letting go of anger, in letting go of anger you may have had towards others in the past? The main idea I wanted to share in this screenplay was that if we hold on to anger, it will hurt us more than the person or people we are angry at. We need to learn to forgive and let go to really be free to love. I am ready to say that really, we need to forgive because God forgave us. My friend Matt says to live in the light, not the darkness. We choose every day where we will live. Absolutely. And, um, you know, in learning about you, it seems that um, your faith in God has been an, an important part of your life and you wrote a book called Sunshine regarding this. Can you tell our listeners a little bit about Sunshine? I think that this book is about identity and understanding who we are. When we have God's light in us, we have a hope that never fails. The rock or gold in the story represents the hope and gift of light I want to give to others. I want everyone to find their true worth and value. And uh, beyond this interview, Emma, how can people learn about the screenplays, books that you've uh, written? They can go to my webpage, Hope Never Ending. I keep it updated with new writing and you can buy my books there. And I hope people definitely go and check out Hope Never Ending. 
And, you know, Emma, um, I really enjoyed the conversation. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. This was a really fun interview. I appreciate you having me on your podcast. Thanks so much to Emma for the conversation. To learn more about Emma, please check out the link in the podcast description for this episode. At Autism Personal Coach, we provide customized coaching for autistics to help improve the quality of their lives. All of our coaches are either autistic or are autistic selected for their commitment to trauma-informed and neurodiversity-affirming strategies. They deeply understand burnout, sensory needs, executive functioning, and the importance of special interest. If you're interested in learning more about our coaching, please visit AutismPersonalCoach.com for more information. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Autism Stories, and if you did, if you could tell a friend, foe, or anyone you know about it so they could have the same enjoyable and educational experience as you when listening to Autism Stories, it would be very much appreciated. Until next time, I'm Doug Bletcher of Autism Personal Coach. Talk to you then.